So uh, first things first, we are going to see a lot of Star Wars in this presentation. So I hope you like it. If you don't, uh, better start liking right now. So it might be still time for you. Um, and uh, who never heard anything about GraphQL? I'll go in a really simple way. GraphQL is an API. OK, pretty nice. So it's time to switch our minds to uh, API context. So think about SOAP, RPC, RESTful, or maybe anything else which is an API nowadays. So it's meant to be a web API. So uh, just switch your mind to that. It's not necessarily uh, related to uh, GraphDB, but we are going to see some things which might relate a bit, and it can be relatable, but uh, don't get uh, stuck into that. So uh, well, what's the best way to start talking about an API, right? So uh, in APIs, we always need to fetch some data. So let's uh, talk about the data set we have to do. So let's say I want to grab Luke Skywalker, still the young one here. And then, uh, well, this is the first step in the process. But we also want to get some extra data from our dear Luke. So let's say we want to know which planet uh, Luke comes from. And we also want to know which kind of spaceships he's uh, flying around in the universe, having a lot of fun. And we might also get some extra data from Luke himself, because, well, we want to get the full nice screen uh, to check all the data together. OK, so uh, in normal APIs, how this approach would look like? So uh, first, well, let's uh, get the page with all the people that we know, so the 10 characters that we saw before. And then, OK, now give me the information about Luke. And then, well, now that I have the information about Luke, I can at least trace two more calls. So I can go and get the planet, Tatooine in this case, and I can also call uh, new fan sent points for my uh, Starship collection. Uh, I'll also put in a pagination there because, well, maybe he pilots a lot of spaceships. You never know. And then I can make a few extra calls to get the information for my spaceship. Well, uh, this is a common usage that we do all the time. We do it in code. We do it in APIs. We do it in database. Uh, this is called the n plus 1 problem, n plus 1 issue. That's when you have to wait for certain data so then you can continue uh, walking on your algorithm or et cetera. So in this case, we have to first check the list of people and then get... Uh, a certain person and then start drilling down all the data that we need. Uh, so GraphQL actually comes, one of the main reasons, it's actually prevent this kind of things. Uh, how this would work like? So let's say we have tailor-made endpoints. That sounds pretty cool, right? And then uh, you can come to me and say, ah, yeah, I have already tailor-made endpoints and they're called RPC back, back at work. So I can get, well, all the information about Luke, all the information about, uh, well, the spaceships, the world he lives at. So, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, but let's see uh, how GraphQL approaches this issue. It's a bit different. So uh, everything you do on GraphQL starts with a query. Oh, what a surprise. Uh, and then you have a result. Pretty nice. And then uh, things start getting a bit more structured here. So uh, we start always with a keyword. So query, just like we're talking to the database or something like that. Uh, and then you give a name to it. Just because we want to look Skywalker, I'm going to give it a name. Uh, but you can already see that in the other side, we already have some structure as well. So we always have the data as a, the first key for the data coming from the response from your query. And then uh, we can start putting some information there. So then uh, I'm asking for a certain person. In this case, I already know their ID, but uh, well, it uh, doesn't matter right now. And then uh, we have person in the other side as well. And then we start looking for some data because, well, we want a custom endpoint for us. So I want their name. I want a birth year. Oh. My microphone is mute, cool. Uh, I wanted the height, hair color, and then uh, that's where things start to get interesting, so I can also query for my related data. So in this case, I'm already looking for this Starship connection, and then I have a sub-object here that I can check, which is the Starships themselves, and the name of the Starship. Uh, of course, in here I could put even more information. So uh, when we see a plural here, we can already see the, my response is already using a the normal resets because, well, it's going to return an array, either zero or many items, depends on uh, how many items you are getting. And then I, in this case, I'm going to get two uh, spaceships because Luke's a cool guy. Uh, and then, uh, well, I can also make a different relationship. I can also ask for the home world. And then, oh, nice. So I have here the tattoo in world. So you can see, like, it's tailor-made, but it's tailor-made accordingly to the screen or to the client that you are using. Uh, I think this generates a really good uh, thing, which is uh, a lot of love between the clients and the backend API. Because I think uh, if you guys have been uh, working with APIs or et cetera, there is always like this person, hey, could you add those fields to the API endpoint that I have created yesterday? 
And then there you go, putting some extra fields or removing some fields or putting some fields for certain permissions. And then you come there and say, yeah, it's deployed uh, next Monday. And then, wow, OK, takes, takes a few days. In this case, if the field is available, they can ask for it. Of course, we can put some uh, limitations into that, but we'll check on that later. Uh, let's check into something which is also really common, so when we have many items. So uh, in that case, we got only Luke Skywalker, and then we went through the data which is interesting about Luke. Uh, that time, we want to get only the good movies about Star Wars, and then uh, we all know which movies are those, right? So all films, first three, please. Of course. Uh, and then uh, we can already see the, the mirroring happening again. And then uh, this time I have films, OK, again. So I have an array, so I'm going to receive a few films. In this case, I wanted the episode ID and the title. So pretty cool. We know all the good films. So episode four, five, and six, the titles. So that makes it really easy. Uh, of course, that was a really simple pagination uh, because we only got the first three items. So, uh, well, uh, f if we make the same comparison to people, I would just come, okay, the, those are all the people that I have, so please give me the first three. But let's say uh, we want to go to the middle of my, uh, my data set, how we, how we get there. So uh, we need first to find some kind of pointer. So in this case, let's use our dr 2 d 2 as a pointer, uh, and then let's start asking. So uh, I still want a tree, but uh, they are not in the zero index anymore. So I have to tell from where I want to start getting those three next items. In this case, well, after our 2 d 2 OK, pretty simple. So we can already deduce what happens if we want to walk the other way around, because it's also possible. So I can ask even from before. So it works like a limit of set, but also with a bit of difference that in which direction you want to walk. Uh, and that's interesting, because for example, if I started here and I wanted these three characters, I would have like first two and then make a second pagination with first three after uh, Darth Vader. So that's a bit different. But in this case, we can walk in both directions and choose the size that you want to. That's quite interesting. Uh, so how this looks like in a query? Uh, OK, so uh, we have the first three after our 2D2. Uh, this time, you're going to note something here called edges and node. Those are two uh, reserved words. So this is basically saying that you have multiple items inside this pagination. Uh, we'll get better into there. but. Uh, the node itself here is a person, so it's an object of type person. And then we are going to have the same things as we had before. So name, ID, and then you can have hair color and height, everything that we got from Luke before. Uh, but it's almost like that, because uh, we cannot simply just come and say, hey, uh, everything after or before are 2 d 2 Yeah, kind of your connection doesn't know that. It's not like you can just point to a name and then say, hey, uh, give me this person. So uh, how are we going to do that in GraphQL? So uh, we are going to use the relay cursor connections. I don't know if any of you have ex an experience with relay framework. Have you heard of it? Raise your hand. Raise your feet. No? OK, so uh, one person. Cool. So uh, relay has a different way of doing these paginations. Uh, it's kind of fancier. So let's see how it would look like. OK, again, uh, we have the same things. So uh, we have edges, node. Those are the results we are looking for. And, uh, and in here, we are going to have something a bit different. It's called a cursor. Uh, the cursor is basically an indication to certain object in that data set. OK, that's a long term, but it's simple as, in this case, uh, this cursor, y, x, blah, 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 it's equal to Darth Vader. So I can just come and say, OK, everything after Darth Vader or anything before Darth Vader, using the keywords we saw before. Uh, that's pretty simple. I could go for Leia, and if I do the same query now, uh, Oh, sorry. If I do the same query now executing this cursor, I'm going to see different results, and then you can always follow the cursor. So that's a cursor which is pointing to a single, to a single unit. Could be any object. So it could be even the spaceship that we got, the relationship of spaceships, or et cetera. Uh, but we want to sometimes have something uh, more in the global scope. So you want to see all people in all films. So it, it kind of is a bigger data set. So you can, for example, use the total count. And this time, you can see it's inside the all people, not in the edges anymore. Inside the all people, we are going to have something called total count, which is simply as the amount of uh, objects we have in the, our data source. Um, and then page info. That's also another typed object inside uh, GraphQL, also a reserved keyword. So uh, if you have a pagination using Relay, uh, you got to use that. That's kind of uh, on the RFC. So, uh, and then we have some pretty interesting things. So we see has next page, has previous page, start cursor, and end cursor. 
this time there is a, a small difference. So uh, if we start getting the first three items, like we did in the example before, uh, when we use the, now the end cursor, this end cursor is actually starting from the fourth item and so on and so forth. And this happens because now we are talking about pages itself. We are not talking about uh, the each item per se. And that's happening because we are talking about the whole all people data set. So then uh, we can observe the cursors and then you can basically put them again in another query and then you can just use them as as much as you want until for example you wanna uh, has next page next page to false for example so you know that you reached the limit. So sometimes you don't even have to calculate the total for yourself. So you kind of don't have in your client to keep control uh, exactly how many pages have you walked or not. That happens because we might have some kind of dynamic approach into this. Let's say your data is growing or not, or et cetera, so you wanna know where your cursor is standing still. Uh, and exactly because of that, so uh, the reason behind we have uh, such a complex pagination, let's say, it's because it's good for dynamic data. Uh, have you ever wondered how, for example, on Facebook, you are always scrolling down and it's never repeating the items uh, into your screen, even though if you think you have, I don't know, 600 friends and 500 pages that you follow, you have a big input of data just for your timeline. And uh, you have to understand this pagination is not like in a, just a database table like, oh, get all posts for, for Luke Skywalker. Yeah, that's quite not the case. So uh, you have to create some kind of connection. And that's, that's the connection exactly what is, how it's defined for Relay. Uh, you have the connection and then the server, the back end, is going to decide what to feed you. So which kind of information it's going, it's going to give to you. Uh, so the, the ideas we saw, they look like this, but they're actually just a base 64 encoding. Uh, in this case, in my example, uh, they are translatable to array connection zero. It's because my data source is actually an array. It's not a database or et cetera. But that's the thing. Uh, don't don't uh, decode this, uh, this value because it's supposed to be opaque. Your server can decide whatever they want on how to give you this information or not. So just don't, don't try to, uh, yeah, to decode and hack into the pagination. Uh, is the pagination clear? If you wanna have a question, it's okay. Okay, good. So, uh, well, another important aspect of any API is putting data inside, of course. So uh, in GraphQL, it's called mutations. It's a bit different from what we see from other, uh, yeah, uh, from other APIs, mostly RESTful, where you do like a post, or something like that. So in here we just call it mutations. And then it's also like a query, but then we use a new keyword here, which is mutation, <laughs> pretty nice. And then uh, you give it a name, again. In this case I'm using the same name as the mutation as it's defined in my, uh, in my schema, for my graphical schema. And then uh, we can use some variables and then we can pass the value inside. Okay, looks uh, pretty simple, but there is one uh, cool feature here. You can see in the same time I'm inserting the data, I can already retrieve some data. So in a single uh, shot, I can basically give my review and I can already ask for the episode that, I'm, uh, that I was uh, sending the review to. So uh, it's a really fast interaction. So again, GraphQL is preventing the HTTP over, uh, overfetching because uh, normally you would go for the post, you would wait for the confirmation, and then you would, oh, okay, maybe I got an ID here, and then you go for the ID and look for the rest of the data, and then creating again that N plus one issue that we saw before. Uh, and those variables we are seeing here, they also work for queries. Also, there are some features like fragments, if you wanna like split your queries in multiple pieces and then uh, use, reuse it uh, in other places. Uh, let's see how it looks like in a better example. So uh, we are gonna again make a review. We are gonna make a review to a certain episode. So let's say episode three, which is part of the good films. Uh, and then uh, you send the content of your review, like, oh, that's a pretty nice uh, movie or so, uh, or be a Jedi. And then you wanna send your rating. Uh, of course, you're sending five. It's part of the good movies, come on. So uh, how, how we get the, the, the result in this case? So again, the same structure. I have the data and I have the review, which is part of the, the object that I'm getting back, uh, which has the content. And then review has a relationship with a film, with a movie. And then I can get anything from this movie. So uh, I could even drill down here, for example, to get all the characters from this movie if I wanted to, if, my, if, my, uh, yeah, if I had the need on my presentation screen or something like that. So that's pretty nice. And of course, uh, we see here like the average rating is four. So I'm already increasing the, the rating. In the same time, I'm already returning to what's the new one. So you can just update your screen having a lot of happiness about it. 
So uh, what's happening uh, if you think about HTTP, what's happening behind the screen, oh, behind the scenes, I'm sorry. Uh, it's actually still just a JSON post. But there is one thing which you're gonna notice here is the query is being sent as a string. So uh, you basically get the query, send it as a string to the server. Uh, the variables though are still all JSON, so that's good. So if you keep uh, all the variables well used in your queries, you can just pass them as native so there is no conversion in between. And uh, you say the operation end. That happens because uh, you can have multiple queries in the same big query you're sending, and then you just wanna say, okay, execute this one for me. So uh, that's an approach that your client can do, your front end or your mobile app, doesn't matter. Uh, in the response, in this case, I'm doing an introspection query. I'm asking GraphQL about its own schema. We are gonna get there. Uh, and then I just receive a JSON response. Very simple, good for your mobile, good for your front end. It's pretty nice. Uh, as you can guess, like uh, many people must be thinking now, oh, okay, so uh, I don't have like my 500s anymore. I don't have my 404s. So what's happening uh, when something happens? So uh, GraphQL has a few ways to handle errors, just like your SQL in your database. Um, so we have simple syntax errors. Those are pretty easy. Those are all based on uh, abstract syntax tree, for example, that we already heard it about it today. So, uh, for example, you didn't put a, a variable or you are doing uh, some wrong typing, for example, you are declaring a variable as a string and then you are inputting it in a place which is supposed to be an integer. So it's all got on uh, yeah, abstract and simple syntax errors. Or we can have runtime errors, of course, because the servers can fail as well once in a while. Uh, so for example, you try to get episode one, two, or three, and then I'm gonna tell you, hey, this episode doesn't exist, I'm really sorry. Uh, and then it's gonna point out also to which part of your query you're asking for it. So it's actually something really interactive, uh, because you can log that afterwards and know exactly which field you're asking and what actually got an error. And the cool thing about it is that uh, since it has this kind of uh, asynchronous approach, you're only gonna get no in, this, in the places that you couldn't get the data, but the rest of your queries is still gonna execute. Of course, it depends on your backends. Like uh, if you fail miserably and uh, your server shuts down, of course, you're not getting anything back. But uh, if everything's still running fine, you can get partial data. So uh, you don't have to break completely. And that's a pretty interesting feature as well. Uh, so that's an introduction on GraphQL. If I missed something really obvious, you can ask now. Is there anyone like, oh my God, Yeah, like uh, you would get like one field like review with no, but for example, person would still have the data from Luke Skywalker, for example. You would have a mix of null data and uh, good data. So your client can basically decide whether or not show parts of your screen, for example. Uh, of course, you can depend on certain uh, intelligence or smartness from your client. It's mapped to the original query, which you still have it, yeah. So uh, it's always regarding what you sent. So uh, how we, we can start bootstrapping that in PHP? I won't take long in this part. It's gonna be pretty simple. So we are gonna use the, this library, use WebUnix GraphQL PHP. The good thing, they support 100% of the specification, which is done by Facebook. So, uh, well, if you just wanna use any feature of the query, you can just use this model. Doesn't mean that uh, you know, your database or your data source in your backend is gonna support everything because you can have like live connections and a, a bunch of cool features, but at least the query is gonna be parsed properly. So you know what's coming from to your backend. Uh, we basically start by the defining a few objects. So, uh, well, we wanna define here a human type and then we are gonna call it human. You put some description on it. You put some fields. In this case, you are gonna put field ID and then you're gonna say it's not new and it's a string. So here you can uh, see one more time, we have a lot of typing. And that happens because GraphQL is strictly typed. So you always have to type until the scholar level. So you can never like just say, this can be either this or that. No, it's not working as uh, yeah, this magic casting or et cetera. So you have to define everything, so that makes it really strong, which is pretty nice. And then uh, when we deal with GraphQL, we always have things called resolvers. Uh, the resolver is uh, exactly the way where the query after parsed in your backend, how it's gonna communicate within your code. So you have to make a bridge. So that's the bridge. 
In my case, I told you guys that I had uh, some array data set. So, uh, well, I'm just going to look for the ID inside my array and then return it back. But of course, you could call some services and some uh, other things of your code, and which would call databases or other APIs even. That depends completely on you. Uh, the query is going to be represented as a string. If you want to make, for example, an internal call, you could simply do this. So uh, you would just call the GraphQL uh, well, library and then say, hey, execute. First, of course, you have to give the schema. So that definition of the schema we saw on the slide before, it would have to be already built and valid. And then you could just send the string, which has the query and it would be validated and would return the errors in case uh, you have some syntax errors. Uh, but of course, this part here is usually executed by the, yeah, your HTTP entry point. So your index PHP file or your framework, Laravel or Symfony, doesn't matter. They would do it for you and the query would get, of course, from the, from the request. Uh, I won't stay too much there, long, too much time there, because Symfony is going to show a similar approach, just easier to configure. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to show examples using the overblock GraphQL bundle which behind the scene use that PHP library. So it's all connected. They are basically just making a bridge uh, with Symfony and creating some other nice features on top of it. Uh, okay, let's start declaring some interfaces. Uh, now we are gonna use YMLs because, well, it's easier. Uh, so then we have, again, a character. It's a type interface. And then I have a few fields. Uh, so ID, name, type string. Uh, and then I can have some relationships here already. So for example, uh, here, if you observe, I'm asking for friends of a certain character. So uh, I'm already putting brackets here because this might return an array. So that's going to trigger that pagination we saw before, and then uh, awaiting the result, already putting the array, and knowing all the types behind there. All the introspection would be based on these types. Uh, and then uh, we also going to have a piercing, which is like, OK, which moves is the character uh, showing on? Of course, always putting some descriptions, making it nice. And then now we are going to have the concrete implementation so we can declare some objects. So uh, we have human, which is then uh, an interface of character to make it pretty nice because, well, we can also have droids. So uh, you can have both humans and droids, which are implementations of a character. So both of them are going to have ID, name, and home world. So that makes it really easy for you to already define some types in your uh, Star Wars scenery. But of course, uh, the interfaces are not required. They are just nice if you need it. Uh, but well, you can go without it. You can basically just declare here with type object, and then you remove those uh, last two lines, and then you go directly declaring some objects. That makes it even easier to configure. Uh, okay, so now uh, we were talking about the HTTP, how it gets to the server. So uh, in Symfony, it's a bit different because the bundle is already going to take care of all the parts of instantiating and making the services for your uh, GraphQL, your scheme already built it for you. So we only have to make a way to now communicate with Symfony. Uh, it's simply going to happen with another configuration file. So we have here query.types.yml. We start with it. It's also an object type. So it's basically using its own schema definition to define the entry queries, like the root queries, as they call it. Uh, the fields are going to be then the queries. If you remember that we had uh, all people, all people would be declared here as well as we are declaring now all humans. And then we can tell, OK, this is a type of uh, array of humans. And then uh, how do I resolve that? OK, uh, we have now uh, this pretty thing here, which is uh, Symfony Expression Language. I don't know if you have ever, ever heard of Symfony Expression Language. You guys know it? Oh, pretty nice. So you know uh, how powerful it can be. And in this case, uh, the, the bundle itself offers us this uh, resolver uh, inside the, the expression which we can just pass a name. This, pass, uh, this name is later going to match with a service, which I'm going to show you how. And then we can also get some marks. So if we check, for example, I want to get a single human uh, on a query. So then uh, I'm going to declare some arguments and then an ID. Because so uh, what's happening here? If you want to get a single human in a query, you always have to give me an ID. If you check the exclamation mark in the end, this is making this argument required. So you can't even like, validate your query without putting this data there. So then uh, you ask for your human's UUID, for example. You get it, you pass it to the resolver, and then you can basically make it happen. Uh, I'll show you how it works with mutation as well, and then we get back on how they talk to each other within the system. Uh, mutation has the same entry point, pretty simple. So we start with mutation types, YML, and then you put a mutation keyword, also type object. 
Where things start to differ is that, of course, uh, we are talking about a mutation, so we are inserting data there. So we want to have way more arguments than we had before. So uh, the review we had before, I would have here uh, three required arguments, so the episode, the content, and the rating. Uh, and then uh, there is this field here, which is the type episode. This is actually the return type of my mutation. So that's exactly what allows the user, uh, the client, to keep querying after he's making, uh, they are already making a uh, query. So uh, it's pretty nice because, well, you are sending a review and you can already get the episode back. And as we saw, you can get already, like, get already the average rating, the new one. So you sent a number five, you get a number four. So maybe it was a three before, but you're already calculating and then uh, giving it back to the user. Also resolves uh, using another special uh, Symfony expression language. So just called mutation in this time, also pretty straightforward. You give it a name and then you can give the arguments. Uh, in here you can see we are giving the arguments and already matching with the name. Uh, oh, there's a typo here, I'm sorry. But uh, this would match, for example, with uh, episode or content and then you can already pass it to match within PHP. Uh, okay, so how uh, this expression language and uh, Symfony services are matching, that's where the kind of magic starts. So let's say we are gonna have here the Star Wars uh, Human Resolver. It's just a simple class. We are gonna inject some things. So for example, I'm gonna inject my repository, which is checking from my array again, doesn't matter. Uh, and then uh, we are gonna declare some tags, some Symfony tags, because we want to make it discoverable by the, by the bundle that we just put. So uh, we are gonna use this tag, the overblock GraphQL Resolver, and we are gonna give it an alias. And we are also gonna create another one, which is the human. Uh, the methods we saw here are exactly the methods inside the, the class, so it's pretty easy. And uh, the name we saw here again, the all humans, it's exactly matching with the name we saw before on the resolver. So you have the expression language saying, okay, this is a resolver to where, okay, this is to all humans. And uh, when the bundle gets the, the tags and compiles your, um, your dependency injection, then you have this. Uh, so that's how it's matching. So from that point on, you get inside your PHP code. Uh, okay, that's the human resolver that we had before. So we are gonna have the, the method I had, so resolve all humans, and then I'm type hinting here all the arguments that I wanna have. And then I'm simply going to my human repository and say, okay, return everything. Uh, is that a simple, clear code from Symfony, I think, for everyone who already has some, um, yeah, not just Symfony, but anything. Uh, and then I want to resolve a single human, as we saw before. So uh, string human ID, which was one of was my required argument. And then uh, you can already see it's pretty nice, right? Because uh, I have return type hints. I have uh, my type hints for all my arguments, so the, my uh, method signature is really strong. And in this case, I'm just going again to my repository, and then I'm getting find by one. That's pretty nice. Uh, if I couldn't find, I can just return a user error, which we are gonna see soon as well. So uh, let's say I couldn't find it. So we can basically get our exceptions from our uh, repositories that you have just created, like human not found exception, and then uh, you convert it, and then you send a new uh, user error, which is then a runtime error that we are gonna get on our GraphQL. Uh, in this case, this human was eliminated, okay? Really good valid reason. And then uh, we are gonna have, oh, they are early there. <laughs> <laughs> like time flew. Uh, okay, so uh, we can have a few types. Uh, it's pretty simple, so user error, so this user was eliminated. Uh, user warning, it's a sleeping, so I can't return this user, right, oh, this human right now to you. Or we, you can return multiple different uh, uh, errors at the same time. In this case, you can even pass uh, new classes of errors, or you can even pass just like strings. If you have any reason like, okay, I just wanna give some errors extra, and that's it that I have right now. So it's pretty simple. We just uh, intercept the code which can fail since we have all the return types. It gets really simple, so uh, you just throw uh, your exceptions everywhere. So on PHP 7, it looks pretty nice. Of course, you can do the same on uh, PHP 5 and etc. So uh, versioning, that's of course uh, one thing also important. If you guys have been working with RESTful or SOAP, uh, versioning is practically really easy again, right? So GraphQL v1, v2, v3, v4, v5, no, no, I'm just kidding. It's not how it works here on uh, GraphQL. It's a bit more uh, well thought, let's say, than you have to maintain like many endpoints. So uh, we are gonna start deprecating things. 
in this case, uh, again, this is just the configuration for uh, the Symfony bundle, but you can do the same PHP, you can do the same with Apollo, JavaScript, or et cetera. Uh, the, the content is the same. So uh, we had the fields before. So now we are just gonna add a deprecation reason. Simple as that. Now your client is gonna be aware that droids don't deserve names. We only should call droids by IDs, of course. It's easily identifiable. Uh, it's just a simple line that you add in your, um, in your typing, in your schema. But for example, you could even make it more explicit later. You could, uh, when the user jumps into that resolver that we had before in our configuration, you could already throw a user warning if you want to. Just come and say, hey, this field's gonna be deprecated or something like that. It's up to you, of course, negotiate first with your clients. You still wanna make them happy. Uh, but how this actually looks like, because uh, you've, you have realized that uh, GraphQL has this whole schema. So the whole thing's self-discoverable. So you can basically understand everything which is happening to the data just by looking at the schema. So you can basically make another introspection query. So if you check the reserved namespace here, underline, underline type. So I'm gonna make a query to my schema. So I'm going to my schema and say, hey, uh, can you get the droids for me, the droid type? And then you're gonna say, okay, include all the deprecations. And then we are gonna ask the name of the fields, uh, the, if it's deprecated, and if it is, what's the reason behind it? And then we are gonna see something like that. The ID is still the same, still uh, remains the same. So is deprecated false? Deprecation reason, no, of course. There is no deprecation here. But then uh, if we go to the name, we are gonna see, is deprecated true? And uh, deprecation reason, uh, we can put the reason why the, this field is deprecated. So, you, you start seeing that uh, the, the client has to be smart as well. Uh, GraphQL is about having a, giving some power to the client. So you could basically, when you get the full schema, uh, before making the first call, for example, to uh, any GraphQL endpoint, you could already make an analysis of all your uh, deprecation. And then you could send it to some uh, data dog or some, uh, any kind of uh, monitoring system that you have, put it on logs, just make sure you're gonna get this later and understand what's happening. Because sometimes you have like a service running for a an year and then they start deprecating things now. You would like to know it's happening, of course. Uh, so that's pretty easy. And uh, of course, uh, we are talking about like a whole well-defined schema and uh, extremely strict. So uh, we can also document that because it's so well-defined that we basically can make an introspection and make a self-documentation. Uh, we are gonna see that everything which was defined in this schema, we can basically uh, navigate through it. So in this case, we are checking here the film's connections, and then uh, we can see each and every uh, field that you have in a film. Uh, and you can basically keep going. So uh, you're gonna see all the types, of course, and then uh, we are gonna check like the Starship's connection, because, well, Starships are always cool. Uh, and then, uh, well, of course, it's an array of Starships, so we go for Starships, and we know all the data we can get from a Starship. I was only getting the name in the first example, but you can see that we have like 20 more fields. Uh, and then uh, you saw that we could come back to films because of course, uh, sometimes your data makes some loops. So uh, you go from a film and then you see that you can have starships on that movie, but you also check another starship and wanna see which moves that starship was part of. Might be a bit confusing, but well, you, you might have need for that. So uh, the self-documentation is really strong in my opinion, but also uh, it creates another nice feature which is autocomplete because well, Developers, right? That's something we love, if that's the autocomplete. So if you have a client like this, like GraphQL, you can basically start seeing that, for example, when I start with all films, I can basically already autocomplete like the first, before, after, so the whole pagination is already autocompleted for me. I know the object below it, that's a film, and then I can check title, episodes, and then again, we got all the best movies, five, oh, four, five, and six, so the best three episodes ever. So uh, it's really simple, and again, I told you guys that we could uh, make more than one query per request. There we go. Uh, when the client sends, it's gonna say, okay, check all characters. But again, all the, all the complete, uh, out complete. And this time I'm gonna show you exactly how we made the pagination information, the relay pagination. So all the total count, the page info, has next page, has previous page, and edges, which was the keyword. So node is actually uh, a person. So in this case, well, we can see Luke Skywalker, C3PO, we have the cursors, we have the start cursor, the end cursor. So if I get here the end cursor for you now, if I wanna check two other characters which are after C3PO, I can just make that and then again, 
I have more data, R2D2, Darth Vader. I can keep going either until I have no data and then I get a blank result or if I respect the has next page false. Maybe if you guys want, we can watch until the 82 are gone. Yeah, it's good. Oh, no, <laughs> please not. So <laughs> I think it's a pretty nice feature. Um, imagine like having all this power as you are a, as a developer. I have a bad news for the OCD people. This microphone never drops. Uh, you, you can watch it as many times as you want, but I, <laughs> I cut it right before, so you, you're going to cringe later. Sorry for that. So, uh, yeah, you might be also wondering, okay, so if I can go to the fumes and I can get this spaceship connection and then I can get the other fumes and then I can get spaceship connections again, characters, friends of my characters, how big can this thing be? I, I don't trust my users. That's usually what a developer thinks, right? So you want to have some kind of way of protecting that. So uh, have queries. Okay, what do we do about it? So uh, we have a couple of ways to dealing with it. One is limiting by depth, which is, well, can be interesting. So you can just say, okay, you can go to a max of 10 uh, in depth. This is an example of how to do this configuration using the PHP version or using the, uh, the Symfony version. So pretty simple. You can do the same. It's all in the definition. So you can do it in any other server, client, Apollo, etc. Or the one which is quite nice. That one is based on complexity. Because let's say sometimes you, uh, you might have someone making 20 on depth. <laughs> <laughs> you might have someone making uh, 20 on depth, but uh, well, might be just simple data. So you, you actually don't care. They are just getting person and it's from a single table. So yeah, what is the purpose of limiting only to 10? So you can put some complexity. Uh, the complexity defines each field that you have on each object is going to count as one. And if you go, it starts summing up. If you have a, a, uh, like 10 items, then it multiplies by 10. So it's pretty simple, uh, which already makes it quite nice. So you can say, oh, based on my server, my configuration, the performance of my database, how good my data is, blah, 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 I can get up to 1,000 of complexity, always below 50 MS. So you make the calculation for yourself, and then you define what's a good complexity for your case. But of course, you can start uh, customizing that. So let's say uh, you have a specific field in your GraphQL which actually makes a call to another API. So uh, instead of getting from uh, your own data source, you have to go somewhere else and then get more data. So then uh, you can increase the complexity manually. You can just say, okay, if you're getting droids, droids I have to search by ID, but it's still, it's a bit complex for my system. So uh, I'm gonna add the complexity of a thousand here. So if your uh, client tries to get more than that, you just cut out the rest of the, the query and then you serve only the data up to a thousand of complexity. So again, it's always like trying to serve the best as it can. And that's pretty nice. Uh, also other really important features, security, right? Uh, we don't wanna get into mess here. So uh, pretty simple. In this case, we can, uh, on Symfony case, you can already use the access using again the Symfony expression language. So you can basically use your whole uh, setup from it already is from the Symfony security. But you can also implement new uh, methods here. You can implement just another service which calls some custom thing that you have in your uh, application which talks to something else. Even talks to LDAP, let's say, if you have a corporate uh, application. Doesn't matter. So uh, you can also use uh, visibility. So if you want to just hide certain information, you can have the same, uh, same approach. So invert it a bit. So if it's public or private, and then you can change based on rules, for example. In this case, I'm going to use the Symfony security, the basic one, just getting from uh, expression language, is granted role admin. So this whole line that you're seeing here, it works out of the box in this case. Because if you're already inside Symfony using the Symfony expression language in this case, you can just basic, basically make this happen for uh, admin. So that's pretty easy. And you can make on the object level as well. So if you want to just say, okay, for this object, uh, I want to get uh, the, all the fields to pass by this service, so you can basically just come, okay, my custom service here is granted and then I can pass the type name, which is in this case human, and then field name, which would be like ID. And I could say, okay, I wanna fade out all my IDs in case of X client, because I don't want them uh, to, to actually understand this kind of uh, use on my system. That's possible for you. So uh, you can see you have many levels on dealing with it. It's pretty flexible again. Of course, I'm showing the Symfony examples because they're just YMLs. You can do exactly the same on the PHP version. And then, uh, well, uh, that there is another approach which is also important because uh, we are, on that point, only limiting based on the fields. So maybe you wanna be limiting on uh, the data itself. 
So let's say uh, as an admin, I can see 1,000 users, but, but as a, a droid, I can see only one user. So uh, what we had before in the example was just going like resolve all humans and then going to my repository and then finding all the humans from my repository. Uh, now let's change it a bit. So uh, for example, this is an approach that uh, we can use uh, with Doctrine or any database connection that you want. We can use a criteria, for example. And then uh, this is not racism, I promise you. But for example, uh, you can only show users which are for, uh, people which are from the same race. In our case, we have humans and droids. So in this case, uh, if I use a criteria like that, and then I use my repository filtering by this criteria, I can use the context of my user and then come and say, okay, if you are a droid, you can see all the droids. If you are a human, you can see all the humans. So we are avoiding some kind of war here. That's pretty nice. So maybe the movies are never gonna exist, right? Oh, that's a dangerous. Um, and of course, like this all schema introspection, etc. well, people start building tools. And tools are really nice. So uh, for example, we can have uh, JetBrains out complete. So while you are developing and uh, creating a client, either for a front end or even a back end to a back end, you can uh, use the same out complete strategies as we saw before. So uh, just a simple configuration telling where your uh, schema is, just go out complete right in your hand, pretty easy. All the same features we saw before. Uh, you have Atom Autocomplete. And uh, the tool I showed you guys before, it's GraphQL. Uh, it has an I between GraphQL. Uh, and that's really, really spread. So for example, with the, the Symfony bundle, it already comes out of the box. So you access certain routes, which is slash GraphQL slash GraphQL, and then you can already access it. You can just disable it for acceptance production environment, for example. Uh, so that's pretty easy, and you can also uh, use it in your browser or et cetera. So that's pretty easy. If you're like a Swagger fan or something like that, you can convert the whole documentation to different formats, which is also pretty cool. If you wanna have visual tools, also pretty nice. If uh, that's also really interesting, it's a Chrome extension, so you can see the network when it's a query and then exactly what's happening with it. And well, that was it. I'm putting here some uh, useful links for you. So all those tools and uh, the whole uh, Star Wars uh, query uh, API is available online. So you can just get the swappy GraphQL and then test it online. It's pretty, pretty easy. Uh, I've heard people like kittens. So I think you like more if it's a Lego kitten. It should be like extra cheerful. And uh, well, thank you. If you have any questions. <laughs> yep. Yeah, for sure. It will be online, of course. It's already online, actually. <laughs> Uploaded before the talk. So uh, you can ask questions. If you don't have questions, you can leave me a feedback. That's also okay. You can choose either asking questions or leaving feedback. Yes? How do we know how to uh, You mean uh, differently from uh, the examples I gave you, like yeah. using the complexity? Right. That's also possible because uh, you can uh, stack as many as you want in depth. So uh, if you create the custom complexity, for example, I showed a simple example where I put a thousand plus the previous complexity. But since that was, uh, it's just a PHP code or a, a Symfony expression, you can basically even connect to another service. You can call a PHP code from your, that you, you made it yourself. And then you can basically go there and say, okay, if I have this data, this data connect to this API and et cetera. So the new complexity is this one. You can make it even dynamically if you want to. So it's completely up to you. Uh, those two implementations I showed you, they are out of the box. So they help you already. So if you know Droid is already complex, you can add an extra 50 points to Droids, for example. And then it's gonna resolve all, uh, yeah, automatically for you. No, no hassle. Yes, more questions? It is one endpoint for everything. It's slash GraphQL, slash whatever you want, of course, because you control the, the software. Uh, and then you send the first HTTP request that I showed you. That was the query, the operation, and the variables. That's exactly what your endpoint gets. And it always outputs JSON as well. So uh, uh, you have a standard, and that's why the clients have to be smart as well. Because if you use, for example, a normal Guzzle connection, for example, uh, you're always gonna get 200s. Because uh, while the, your endpoint's working, it's always 200, but the errors are gonna be in the body. So 
you got to have a smart client. And you already have a lot of smart clients for PHP and your other language already. <coughs> Answers your question? Yeah? Yes? You can do many. Uh, for example, uh, you could use uh, PHP VCR and record uh, the requests. And then you can make a test like, is the JSON output according to the new JSON output that I, I'm doing? You could make it inside your PHP by testing, of course, unit testing all your resolvers. Uh, but you can also, uh, inside your, um, your application, you, you can call the library itself. So you could just call the library internally uh, using PHP unit or any other testing uh, that you like. And then you could just internally send a string which has the query and expect certain output. So uh, there are a lot of options. Now it's really caching. That's a good one, tricky, yeah. Uh, so of course, cache is not gonna happen on HTTP level. That, that's pretty clear. Uh, but of course, uh, the, the, the query itself is just a string which you get and do whatever you want. So when you get to the resolver level, then that's where you can uh, start to do your caching. So uh, you can have many strategies. So you can do per resolver, like per object, per interface, depends on uh, how your application uh, behaves, of course. But uh, we have some uh, smart also tools, which are like, for example, the data loader, which actually use promises. So each level you are resolving, you start a chain of promises, and then in the end, you could see all the data that you are getting, and then uh, retrieve part from the cache, part from the database, part from another API. So that's uh, completely flexible. It's not so out of the box, like as using an HTTP uh, cache, but uh, you still have all the possibilities around. But don't count on HTTP in this one. Yeah. More questions? Yes. Uh, yeah? Is the mutation not here only for mutations? No, mutations are used for inserting the data. Yeah. The mutations uh, where you put the variables in the query, uh, you can send all the data that you want. Uh, it can be even a bit better because, for example, the types we saw before, you can even type an argument. So you can say the type of this argument is going to be a droid. So you can send the completely data of the droid, respecting what's required, what's not required. So it's fully possible. Yeah. More questions? No? Okay. <laughs> There are also mutations. Uh, mutation is everything which changes the data. Okay. Uh, and uh, the queries are everything which gets the data. So your mutations can be even like, uh, yeah, completely abstract. Like for example, uh, add one uh, character or uh, add character to movie, make connections. You can, uh, it's completely flexible. Uh, the GraphQL is just the, the reference. It's not gonna tell you how you manage your data, but how uh, the communication goes between the back, the, the, the server and the client. Yeah, it's a, it's a communication layer. It's a, try to, to understand, uh, yeah, like an SQL, for example, you're talking to your database and you don't have HTTP there. You only have TCP IP, but you still manage to do all the operations and know the errors, know exactly what's happening. It's the same process, it's standardizing the communication between. So it's flexible, the way you wanna do it. More questions? Yeah, you can make it no or not, that's optional. Uh, the common approach that I showed you, you are gonna return all the data, and then uh, the GraphQL itself, when serializing the data back to the client, is gonna stri uh, strip out all the extra fields. But uh, for example, if you wanna save on, uh, making, uh, on getting the extra data from your data source, then you can use the approach like with promises as the data loader that I just said in the other question. And then you can basically know, you can introspect into the query, see all the fields, and then you select all the fields that you want. You can do it uh, even without the promises as well, of course, because when you're inside the resolver, you can ask for the, for the whole query. So you can just say, okay, which fields they want, and then you only query for those fields. This is just a straightforward example, which is like get everything, and then I strip out on the output. Of course, it's not really saving a lot of traffic from the database, but it's saving more on the HTTP layer, which is usually slower, of course. Answers? Yeah, okay. More questions or you are tired and want to go home? Yeah? <laughs> Three, two, 
One, no? Okay, well, thank you all. <laughs>